This is a lecture on bargaining and collective action with a focus on Hurricane Sandy and real estate owners in southern Manhattan. So I believe that the following example is going to arise again and again in the economics of adapting to climate change. And let's do a cute example. In this slide, I graph three adjacent properties in southern Manhattan. Don Trump is the square. He's right on the water. NYU is the heart. It's right on the water. And me, the triangle, is a big parcel of southern Manhattan real estate located between Trump and NYU. The big idea here I want you to focus on is the probability of flooding. For me, the triangle hinges on actions that Trump and NYU take about uh, actions such as creating green space and other ways to absorb flooding when horrible floods occur. So the key idea in this example is there's three independent landowners. Me, the triangle, is located between Trump and NYU. If Trump and NYU choose to invest in flood protection like wetlands, then the probability that me suffers in the face of a natural disaster declines. The question we need to think about is will Trump and NYU make such socially beneficial investments? The Coase theorem, named after Ronald Coase, tells us that unless me makes an offer to, to the NYU or Trump parcels, the answer is likely to be no. The invisible hand could break down and there could be significant negative externality in adapting to climate shocks. Let's do some algebra here so you can see this. Suppose that Trump owns two acres, that the area of that rectangle before was two acres. He, there's an opportunity cost to any asset. He is well aware that he can earn a billion dollars per acre if he creates condos on this waterfront side and sells these condos to rich guys like Derek Jeter. Now, the opportunity cost of using this land solely for condos is he could allocate half of this land, one acre, to wetlands, sort of like the Dutch in the Netherlands, and not develop there. The benefits to southern Manhattan in this cooked up example is that the probability of horrible flooding would decline from 5% a year to 1% a year, 0.05 to 0.01. If a horrible flood occurs, let's assume that Don Trump knows that his profit would fall by $20 million. That would be his private cost from a disaster. We can now calculate his expected loss if he uses all of his land for condos. If he uses all of his land for condos for the Derek Jeters, then he is creating no wetlands. In that case, there's a 5% chance of a terrible flood, and he suffers $20 million in that case. So the expected value is the probability, 0.05 times 20, or a $1 million loss to Trump. If he places the one acre in wetlands, he, he loses $1 billion in lost real estate sales, the, the land he could have sold as condos. and but he faces a lower expected disaster loss. Because he created the wetlands, there's only a 1% chance of a disaster, and then he suffers that $20 million loss from the flooding and headaches. And so 0.01 times 20 million is 200,000. It's pretty clear to me that he will not set aside this land. The loss in revenue from setting aside the land does not compensate the reduction in costs, the private costs to him. But now let's think about Matt, and this is a cooked up example. Suppose that Matt's triangle is worth $50 billion, that it's in the following sense. If a flood occurs, Matt suffers $50 billion worth of real estate damage. Trump has no incentive to recognize Matt's loss from this disaster unless Matt makes Trump an offer. Matt would think to himself, if Trump does not create the wetland, my expected loss from flooding is 0.05. There's a 5% chance of a horrible flood. And if that event occurs, Matt loses $50 billion. We multiply those two numbers, probability times loss. And the expected loss, if Trump does not invest in the wetland, is $2.5 billion. If Trump does invest in the wetland, then there's only a 1% chance that Matt loses $50 billion. His expected loss falls to 0.01 times $50 billion or $0.5 billion. Matt knows this. He recognizes that his expected loss from disasters declines by $2 billion if Trump makes the investment in wetlands. So Matt would be willing to offer Trump at least $1.5 billion to create the wetland. Trump would accept this amount of money because that's better than earning the billion selling the extra condos to Derek Jeter. So there's gains to trade here. Matt, of course, would prefer not to pay this $1.5 billion. He would prefer for some mayor to step in and use eminent domain to seize Trump's land, deny him the right to develop it, and just set it aside as wetlands. 
To an economist, that's merely a distributional issue. The efficient equilibrium here is that Trump invests in the wetland and Matt's protection of that triangle, the probability of disaster declines from 0.05 to 0.01. So in the real world, will this coordination take place? Or will we be stuck in the negative externality first case? Will mayors get involved and will they pick winners of d using eminent domain and seizing coastal property to set it aside? Or will they be heavily lobbied not to engage in that? How will landowners in close physical proximity coordinate adaptation efforts?